welcome to another edition of the Data Dialogue podcast. I'm Ann Kelso, Global Head of Financial Services at Intersistence, and in today's episode, I'm joined by my colleague, Joe Lichtenberg, Intersystems Global Head of Product and Industry Marketing. Welcome to the podcast, Joe. Thank you, Anne. It's great to be here today, and it's uh, great to talk to you as always. Thank you for having me on. Today, we're going to talk about some important global research that Intersystems has conducted, which explores the technology and data challenges facing financial services organizations. This has become more essential than ever as the financial sector becomes more intensely competitive amid continuing post-pandemic disruption, volatile markets, and all kinds of unforeseen geopolitical events uh, as we have seen in recent times. So Joe, what was the idea behind this research? Sure, Anne, uh, and thanks again. So, you know, as you know, we have many, many customers in financial services using our software that are all uh, doing uh, really innovative things, really around getting better use of their data for things like decision support, running different kinds of analytics, uh, looking across the business uh, to roll up what's happening in terms of operational performance, customer 360, all sorts of really innovative uh, initiatives and applications across many different sectors in financial services. But to answer your question, the thinking behind the research is we really wanted to gain an even more expansive view across all of financial services in terms of what are the key challenges, what are the key initiatives uh, that are going on, uh, even beyond what we see on a day-to-day basis with our customers and, and our partners. Uh, And so what we did is we ran a a survey where we touched more than 550 line of business executives in a wide range of financial services organizations around the world. So not just uh, US and UK, but Canada, Brazil, Germany, uh, Europe, uh, and so forth. And we asked some really pointed questions. We were really interested in understanding what are their key initiatives, what are the key challenges that the line of business executives uh, were facing, and then also to drill into whether they have the data architectures and and what they need from from an infrastructure and an architecture and a technology standpoint to meet their needs to drive innovation and meet their business goals and future-proof their organizations. So Joe, if we look at the research, I was really surprised to find that 86% of financial services firms globally lack confidence in using data to drive decision-making within their organization. That's really a significant number. Why do you think that is? Yeah, I I know, right? Like 86, what we found from the survey, uh, more than 550 line of business executives, is that 86%, they lack confidence in using data to drive decision-making. So like absolutely startling number, right? We, We know from our experience that there's a drive for the line of business that to use more data, more analytics and real time data uh, to drive decision making, but I was also surprised that 86% are reporting that they lack confidence in using their data. So in the survey, we really drilled into understanding why that that was. And so again, from the from the survey, there are a number of factors contributing to that lack of trust in data. But the the most common, by far, reported by the line of business executives is the delay around taking the data and making it fit for purpose by the business. So only 5% of the data that firms use for decision-making is less than an hour old, only 5%. And then we looked at other intervals as well, but it was also striking that 63% of the data that's used for decision-making is more than 24 hours old. So it's not even intraday data. Um, And so, as we know, the need to understand what's happening in real time has always been prevalent, but especially today with market disruptions and these black swan events that uh, keep happening, 
with ever greater frequency and volatility. The Fed acts, Elon Musk tweets something, right? Every day, it seems like something is happening that drives the markets. And so, you know, the market response to these events happens instantaneously. And so end of day data and even intraday data, very often for many of these use cases is insufficient. And so for most financial services firms, being able to use real-time data and near real-time data to inform and drive decision-making uh, is critical. And in fact, also in the, in the survey, uh, what we found is that the number one technology priority uh, reported by these firms for the next 12 months is, quote, gaining access to real-time data across the business for improved decision-making, end quote. So the number one priority is gaining access to real-time data uh, to help them uh, make better decisions in the moment uh, based on uh, events uh, that are happening throughout the day. So Joe, this has been a really uh, interesting finding. And I'm just wondering, what were some of the other challenges reported by the firms in the survey? There's a number of challenges that were reported by the line of business that keep them from really being able to use their data in the way that they want to make decisions, uh, to meet their business goals and move the needle for the business. So the second biggest challenge reported is around data sprawl or data silos. So 98% of the respondents uh, reported that their organization is struggling with siloed data, which is no surprise, and siloed applications. So siloed data management uh, infrastructure and uh, applications that they're using to run the business. Um, so that's not really a surprise, right? We know that or every organization is struggling with being able to sort of bridge these data and application silos. The next uh, reported challenge was not being able to get the data from all the needed sources. So it's being able to connect to more systems and sources. As we know, the more data that you can bring in to help make decisions, especially if it's uh, related but different, right? You can start to look at relationships among currently disconnected data, but very often that's where you can find the needle in the haystack that will present new business opportunities or critical sort of concerns that you need to, to be aware of and take action. Next was not being able to get the information in the format that the business needs to make decisions. So it's really sort of an integration and harmonization problem, putting the data in the right format so that it's useful to the business. Next reported is around scalability. So the business talks about many times the data that they're provided with is summarized or aggregated. And so it's a, again, it's a scalability problem, but when that happens, the granularity in the data is lost, which means if you're following the breadcrumbs and trying to understand sort of root cause analysis, uh, but the data is not there because it's been aggregated or summarized. That's a problem for the business. And then finally, a, a sort of a related issue is the business uh, really wants the ability to drill into the data themselves and ask new questions and get answers and see where the answers lead them and ask additional questions without the sort of delays and complexities associated with relying on IT making the, the request to IT, getting back on the queue, waiting for IT to respond. You lose that immediacy of being able to drill into the data by the business themselves and get answers to the questions that the data is showing them and follow the data where it leads. To summarize, the business wants to make decisions using more data from more sources. They wanna include real-time data, understand what's happening in the moment, they wanna make sure that they keep the underlying granular data. They want the ability to, to sort of freely explore the data to really understand what's happening in the business and in the markets. So by the way, two of the key areas where we're seeing uh, the need for all of this, there's many, but two of the key areas are around, one, gaining a 360 degree view of the enterprise or the business, what we call business 360. 
and the other is gaining a real-time 360 degree view of each individual customer, uh, what we call customer 360. So getting at the right data at the right time is essential. I'm just wondering, what do you mean by gaining a 360 view of the enterprise? And, and really, why does it matter to the financial services organizations? Yes, and that's a really good question. And you know, this is, as I said, one of the most prevalent use cases that we see uh, with all of our customers and partners across financial services. And so today, as we know, firms are facing a huge range of pressures from things like regulatory scrutiny to you know, the disruptions that are caused by the pandemic and political events. You know, there's more in interconnected markets, there's global competition, uh, there's a need for really understanding risk across the enterprise, uh, what some firms call business management reporting or operational reporting in near real time, and sometimes even in real time using real time market data. It's all about really getting this 360 degree view across departments and regions and trading activity and risk uh, and capital and assets under management and risk utilization limits. And so it's critical today for firms that need to be as competitive and as agile as possible. And so, you know, really the business drivers are around being better able to respond in the moment to growth opportunities and address a whole range of challenges faster and more uh, efficiently and more effectively uh, with better data, more recent data, uh, helping them make better informed and more accurate uh, business decisions. And then around uh, innovation and agility, right? I mean, they have the information that they need to fuel these new significant business initiatives as they arise. So Joe, I have to agree that we're seeing this from our customers as well and our, our prospects. So Business 360 is vital for financial services firms. What we have seen is that if the line of business individuals are empowered with access to real-time 360 degree data, they can make more informed decisions. They're able to better manage and mitigate risk and compliant. And also they're capable of accelerating innovation among many other things. So how is this current lack of access to data and insights affect professionals who want to use the data, Joe? Right, and I mean, that's really the question, right? What are the business drivers? What's the impact from the standpoint of the business in terms of business goals, business drivers, business challenges, data and technology is really just an enabler. So I, I guess I'll answer it two ways. One is, you know, what we see. So, you know, from our experience uh, working with many financial services organizations, large, medium and, and small, and fintechs as well that are working with financial services organizations, we see many different business drivers around better use of data and analytics for decision support around risk and operational insights and customer hyper-personalization and reducing churn and reacting to market events in real time, as I talked about, for example, for better managing client portfolios and increasing alpha and so on. Uh, but the other thing that I wanna talk about is what we found from the survey to understand where the, the key business challenges and, and key business drivers related to a better use of data. Uh, and so the number one answer was gaining a 360 degree view of customers to deliver personalized services. So it's around customer 360 and hyper-personalization. Number two was using data for decision-making, which was, you know, no surprise, sort of a broad answer. Uh, number three was basing decisions on real-time information, which goes back to really, I think the first thing that we were talking about their issue is if they're not looking at real-time data, the assumptions aren't always correct. Uh, next was gaining an enterprise view of risk. Uh, and if you think about what that means to get a better and broader and more enterprise view of risk across the organization, it's in part a silo problem and part a latency problem and part a business user self-service problem. 
So I want to look at data, not just from, you know, one part of the organization or, you know, the trading desk in New York, uh, but I want to look at a roll up of the activity across all of the different trade desks, all the different parts of the organization. So I may have positions that look like uh, they create undue risk, but uh, in aggregate and roll up, they're offsetting positions, so I'm okay. And I'm under my risk utilization limit, uh, or the converse may be true, where it looks like I'm okay uh, in different parts of the organization. But when I look at it in aggregate, it looks like I have unacceptable risk and I need to take action and take offsetting positions and so forth. Uh, and then again, you know, real time data is critical uh, for gaining an enterprise view of risk because positions move so quickly and markets move so quickly. Uh, regulatory compliance was next, and then innovation and developing new applications. So the need to get better use of data around agility and innovation and digital transformation initiatives uh, is a big business requirement as well. Gaining access to data is certainly a very important facet of running the business. And what the survey provided was that customer 360 was the number one response. Joe, can you talk about what this means for banks and financial services organizations? Sure, and and this is consistent uh, with what we see as well from our customers around their needs, what we call customer 360. So, you know, this competition that's intensifying, at, you know, every day now, really demands that all financial services organizations can provide the products and the services that are all hyper-personalized, uh, create real-time customer experiences, delight customers, you know, in ways that customers have come to expect, not only in, in working with financial services organizations, but at every touch point, every digital touch point that they have in their lives. And so, you know, especially now with the competition from fintechs, the environment has really been sort of, you know, more intense than ever. And so, you know, firms know that they need to really hyper-personalize their customer experiences at all touch points. Uh, but to do that, you really need to have an accurate and consistent view of your customer across all of their touch points uh, in working with the company, as well as with third-party data as well. Um, and so that really requires being able to use information that you have on each individual customer uh, from every interaction with different personnel and, and departments and engagement channels and so forth, including trading and savings and credit cards and loans and insurance and the CRM system. The, the data is in production applications, it's in third-party market feeds, and it's also in existing sort of previous data management and application infrastructure like data warehouses and data lakes and different applications and, and silos. And so those are all the sources that an organization needs to touch and leverage uh, to be able to really do this right. It's really, really hard to do that with sort of this array of disjointed systems and, and technologies. And so again, I would say this is really prevalent across all financial services organizations. The level of competition, the intensity of competition, you know, to own the customer experience has never been greater. Uh, and it really puts pressure on the data and analytics and data management infrastructure and all the things that we're talking about in terms of being able to incorporate more data from more sources and being able to include real-time event data and to be able to make programmatic decisions and programmatic actions, predictive, prescriptive actions uh, to really create a superior customer experience. Uh, and that's never been greater than, than it is today. So getting at the right data and being able to trust the data is highly important. And in in the past, many organizations have had to replicate data, try to synchronize it, make alterations in terms of their environments through data lakes, data warehouses. But as you point out that these are all static 
and delayed means of accessing your data. So I'm just wondering with the significant challenges that the research has revealed in the financial services industry, how can these challenges be overcome? Right, and I will tell you that right now it's a very, very exciting time in technology. There's really uh, a lot of advancements uh, that are you know, fundamentally uh, superior than previous approaches. And there's one in particular that really stands out. It's, it's a new architectural approach. It's called an enterprise data fabric. The analysts uh, are calling it the future of data management. It's really fundamentally different from the approaches that have come before and that addresses really all of these important criteria that we've been talking about over the last 20 or 30 minutes or so. It's non-disruptive and so it plays well in the existing environment that any organization has. And as we know, these five large financial services organizations have hundreds and thousands of different systems and silos and so forth. And not just production applications, but also data marts and data lakes and data warehouses and so forth. And so you don't have to turn those off or throw them away. They all become sources into this enterprise data fabric. And so an enterprise data fabric enables organizations to access the data and the information from really any source, uh, whether it's a production application or a third party market production transactional a trading application or a data lake or a data warehouse, uh, whatever. It connects to and accesses information from more sources on demand as it's needed. So, you know, one fundamental difference is you're not sort of batching up this data and making a copy of it with all the sort of delays and complexities involved. So it uses both a connect approach and a collect approach. And connect means just connect to the, the sources that you need as you need it, as the information is being requested and pull it on demand and then apply integration and transformation and analytics and so forth on demand in real time. So you're not necessarily making another copy of the data, uh, you're accessing real time data and you know it addresses a lot of these really critical initiatives around uh, using more data from more sources without the traditional latencies and delays. Uh, so it incorporates all sorts of information uh, including transactional data and real-time market feeds and real-time customer actions. So in the enterprise data fabric, there's sort of a canonical uh, definition. Here at InterSystems, we call the architecture that we enabled a smart data fabric. And the reason for that is in addition to everything that an enterprise data fabric uh, is able to do with data, uh, we have a wide range of analytics capabilities that are built directly into the fabric so they can execute in real time as the requests are being made. And they can be historical data to show me what's happened in terms of roll-ups and cubes and so forth. It can be predictive to show me what's likely to happen. It can be prescriptive. So not only what's likely to happen, but what are the actions that I should take uh, in response and even to drive other applications with prescriptive actions to programmatically take action to both help guide the line of business in their decision making, but also to drive, you know, next generation applications. Uh, and also, you know, a big part of what we enable in a smart data fabric is we provide the business users with the ability to drill into the data themselves so they can understand what's happening in the business and with customers in the moment uh, without delay. So really, it's a fundamentally new architectural approach, this enterprise data fabric, or what we call a smart data fabric. And it's really addressing you know, these limitations of the prior uh, technologies and approaches that have come before. Uh, and it's really helping you know, many customers uh, in financial services move the needle and do things that they weren't able to do before. And I'll, I'll just give you one quick example uh, from one of our customers. So Broadridge, uh, financial solutions is one of the largest fintechs in the world right now. They're a $5 billion global fintech. Uh, they process $7 trillion every day in fixed income and equity trades. Uh, they have over uh, their lifespan, either created or through M&A activity, uh, they're managing over a hundred different applications. And all of those applications have data and 
different formats and different structures and so forth. And so, you know, as you can imagine, uh, they needed a better way to work with all of this data in all of these different systems. And so they wanted to create what they call an enterprise data fabric. It's a 360 degree data strategy that aggregates and normalizes and harmonizes the data from all of these different systems and sources for a variety of different scenarios and use cases. So it's around feeding customer applications, feeding their own applications, uh, internal visibility, customer visibility. And so using uh, InterSystems Iris data platform, our flagship software product, uh, at the core, they implemented a smart data fabric architecture, uh, and it's helping them solve all sorts of these key uh, challenges that we talked about. But the other thing that's really interesting is using InterSystems Iris at the core, they found that they significantly reduce system complexity because in InterSystems Iris, we provide many of the needed capabilities to build out this architecture. So you don't have to stitch together many different point solutions. Uh, and in the process, they found that they were getting 900% better system performance in terms of uh, analytics processing, running on just one third of the infrastructure compared with a different approach that they were looking at. So uh, that's just one example. We're seeing many, many customers with many different business use cases that are leveraging this new architectural approach in enterprise data fabric or smart data fabric to help them move the needle and address a lot of these key business challenges. Joe, that is really impressive. And when you think about it, the ability to access your data at the time that it's needed, and this can be at the moment of operational transactions, it is key. And being able to, and I think another point that you made that I found quite interesting was the approach is complementary to what you already have in your enterprise or your architecture. So it's not rip and replace, it's basically giving you the next generation capability in your data insights and being able to scale it as you need it. So very exciting to hear about the enterprise data fabric or smart data fabric and in, in terms of what we're doing with the analytics built in. What I also want to say is that it's clear from the research that there are many challenges that are being faced by financial services firms. But being able to have that 360 degree view is critical. And in the past, it's been having to duplicate your data, as I mentioned before, causing additional silos and, and including, you know, data warehouses. A lot of people have implemented data warehouses and there's now data warehouses in the cloud. So again, it's, you know, it's another source in a sense of potential data sprawl instead of accessing your data at the point of where the data exists and doing analytics on the data at that point as well. I mean, this is quite exciting. It's certainly something that is resonating with clients that we're talking with and when you look at people who are running the business, it's the ability to restore confidence in the data to drive decisions and arming the line of business with the critical insights that they need. So being able to access the data for risk management, being able to adapt to the changes and disruptive events in the moment is absolutely critical. I want to thank you, Joe, for bringing this to our attention and sharing this very insightful information on this research. And I also want to thank you, the audience, for tuning into Data Dialogue. Hope you found this useful. And if you're interested in finding out more about our solutions for financial services firms, please go ahead to our website at intersistence.com financial. Until next time, bye all.